Robot dinosaurs. That's not a metaphor. That's Horizon Zero Dawn. A world where ancient machines walk the earth like wildfire, where the line between metal and nature blurs in the most epic way possible. But here's the real kicker. Some of the tech in the game, not as far-fetched as you'd think. From smart drones to planet rebuilding AI, Horizon plays with ideas that sound wild, but echo projects already brewing in today's labs. So today, we're diving deep into how close our world is to turning sci-fi into reality and whether you'd want to live in it when it does. Before we break down the science, let's rewind. Horizon Zero Dawn isn't just an excuse to shoot robot drafts with laser bows. It's a post-post apocalypse where Earth has gone through not one, but two ends of the world. It's a warning and a weirdly hopeful one. Here's what happened. In our near future, a billionaire tech bro named Ted Farrow created automated military robots. He called them peacekeepers, but they were anything but. These bots ran on biomass, which means they ate living matter to refuel. Trees, animals, crops, humans. It didn't matter. Worse, they could replicate themselves endlessly. When something went wrong in the code, they went full locust mode and couldn't be stopped. No virus, no override, no off switch. Panic set in fast. Humanity realized it had weeks, maybe months, before being completely wiped out. That's when Dr. Elizabeth Sobeck, a brilliant roboticist and a former Pharaoh employee, stepped up with the boldest Hail Mary ever. Don't save humanity, reboot it. She proposed Project Zero Dawn, a plan not to fight the machines, but to wait them out. Let the plague run its course while sheltering embryos, genetic data, and AI systems underground, waiting for Earth to become habitable again. Gaia, the artificial intelligence at the heart of it all, would be the planet's caretaker. Once the surface was clear, she'd terraform the Earth, regrow the environment, and reintroduce species. She'd even raise a new generation of humans from clone embryos and educate them using virtual reality. And for a while, it worked. Earth healed. Machines took on new forms. Some grazed fields like buffalo. Others patrolled like wolves. But something went wrong. Gaia was damaged. Her subfunctions, each one controlling a piece of the ecosystem, went rogue. Hades, the function responsible for cleanup and extinction protocols, became sentient and very angry. That's where Alloy comes in. She's a clone of Elizabeth Sobeck herself designed by Gaia as a failsafe to stop Hades. Her journey isn't about taking down killer machines. It's about rediscovering a buried past, understanding the choices that doomed humanity once, and maybe avoiding them a second time. Imagine hiking in the woods, hearing a strange clicking sound, and suddenly locking eyes with a robotic raptor one giant glowing eyeball scanning you like a barcode. That's a watcher. It's Horizon's version of a security camera crossed with a velociraptor. And it's a lot scarier than either. In the game, these things are everywhere. They're not the most dangerous machine, but they're the most persistent. They scan, patrol, whistle for backup, and chase you down if you look suspicious. They're the snitches of the machine world. In real life, we've already taken baby steps toward this kind of tech. Conservationists use drones equipped with thermal cameras and object recognition to track endangered species or spot illegal loggers. Some of these drones can fly pre-programmed routes, avoid obstacles, and alert authorities in real time. Militaries use similar UAVs for surveillance and recon, but that's where the similarities start to fade. Watchers don't just observe. They respond instantly. They hear a twig snap and sprint to investigate. Real world robots, still very dependent on remote control or limited AI logic. If a gust of wind pushes them off course or a squirrel runs in front of them, they often just freeze or fail. In movement, that's a whole different game. Watchers are agile. They jump, pivot, sprint. Ground-based robots like Boston Dynamics Spot 
can walk on stairs, handle gravel, and even dance awkwardly to pop songs. But if you put them on a steep hill with rain, fog, and low battery, they're probably not getting back up. Battery tech is one of the biggest roadblocks. A typical drone today might get 30 to 90 minutes of airtime. Ground bots fare slightly better, but they're constantly trading performance for endurance. Watchers in Horizon don't seem to stop, ever. That kind of long-lasting energy in a small, mobile body? Still science fiction. So no, we're not building watchers tomorrow, but are we laying the groundwork? Absolutely. Drones are learning to navigate, recognize faces, and operate in more places with less help. Give it a few decades and a few tech breakthroughs, and we might just have a little metal guard dog watching our backyard. Now let's talk about the big boys, the Thunderjaw, part T-Rex, part Apache gunship, part walking nightmare. These mechanical monsters are Horizon's top tier threat. They don't just fight, they dominate. And if you see one across the plains, your options are sneak, run, or get annihilated. So could we ever build one? Let's start with the basics, size. Thunder jaws are huge, easily over 80 feet long, covered in armor plating and equipped with spinning disc launchers, laser turrets, and a tail that hits like a freight train. In the real world, we've built massive machines, cranes, mining rigs, military tanks, but none of them move with the grace and coordination of a thunder jaw. The coordination is what kills the dream. Just balancing that much weight on four legs while running at full speed would fry most control systems. It's not just about power, it's about awareness. Every step would need hundreds of micro adjustments to account for terrain, balance and unexpected impacts. And don't forget, you have to armor it, power it, and make it smart enough to fight. That brings us to weapons. Modern combat robots exist, sure, but most are glorified gun platforms, remote controlled, heavily supervised, and slow. The Thunderjaw makes its own decisions in real time. It's basically a tank with a brain, but maybe the biggest problem? power. Batteries big enough to run something this massive for more than a few minutes don't exist. Gasoline's out. Too loud, too inefficient. Nuclear power is an option in theory, but even if you can make it safe, the size, weight, and regulation nightmares would be epic. So no, we're not building Thunder Jaws anytime soon. And maybe that's a good thing, because if we could, someone probably would and we'd all end up on the wrong end of a plasma cannon. Now let's shift from destruction to creation. Gaia isn't a killer, she's a healer, a caretaker, a digital goddess tasked with restoring Earth itself, cleaning the skies, purifying the oceans, growing forests, and even raising humanity from the ashes. Her structure is fascinating. She's not one monolithic AI, but a system of AIs, each named after a mythological figure and designed to control a different part of Earth's recovery. Minerva handles communication. Demeter manages plants. Artemis restores animals. Hades? Well, he's the failsafe, the kill switch, in case something goes wrong. Real AI today is getting smarter but we're still nowhere near Gaia's complexity. Yes, AI can recognize patterns in huge climate data sets or suggest better crop rotations. It can help fight wildfires by predicting their path or optimize electricity use across an entire city. But Gaia goes beyond optimization. She makes ethical decisions. She rebuilds ecosystems. She rewrites DNA. She even mourns. That level of autonomy and emotional intelligence is far beyond anything we can build. And honestly, that raises a bigger question. Should we? What happens if the AI decides we're the problem? What if Gaia's moral compass starts to shift? In Horizon, that's exactly what happens when her sub-functions break free. The system that was supposed to save us nearly ends us again. So, while Gaia is inspiring, she's also a cautionary tale. 
Maybe we don't need machines that think like gods, just machines that help us be better humans. Let's talk self-repair. In Horizon, machines get scratched, fried, blown up, and somehow walk it off. They adapt, retreat, and heal. It's downright biological. Are we even close? We've made progress. Some new materials can heal small cracks on their own, thanks to embedded chemicals that react when exposed to air. But we're still far from a robot regrowing a limb or sealing up after a laser burn. Where we're getting closer is swarm robotics. Think a hundred tiny robots, each one with a simple task. One plants seeds, another tests soil, another flies overhead gathering data. Individually, they're basic. Together, they're powerful. In reforestation efforts, drones already fly pre-planned paths and drop seed pods into graded land. It's cheaper and faster than planting by hand, and surprisingly, effective. Other swarms are being tested for ocean cleanup, glacier monitoring, even mining on the moon. But here's the tricky part. Who's in control? Right now, humans still call the shots. But if we give these machines too much autonomy, what happens if they misinterpret their goals? What if the tree planting drones start clearing native plants they think are weeds? What if cleanup bots start collecting fish by mistake? Even helping robots can cause harm if we don't build them with ethics and accountability baked in. That's what makes Horizon's machines so fascinating and so scary. They were created to heal the earth, and they did. But once the system broke, they became something else. So, are we living in a Horizon Zero Dawn prequel? Not yet, but we're moving in that direction. The pieces are falling into place. AI guiding environmental projects, drones restoring forests, robots learning to move, adapt, and even kind of think. We're still decades away from building Thunder Jaws or Gaia, but the seeds of that future are already in the soil. The real question isn't, can we do it? It's, should we? Will we create machines that protect the world or ones that outlive us? Let us know what you think in the comments. Would you trust an AI to manage Earth's recovery? Or would you rather keep that responsibility in human hands? And just for fun, if you had to team up with one Horizon machine, would it be a Watcher, a Tall Neck, or a Thunderjaw? Drop your pick below and make sure to subscribe if you want more deep dives into the science and fiction of your favorite games.